For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright and godly lives in this present age. While we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. Welcome to this awakened generation with your host, Mazino Abraham Eboku. <laughs> Hallelujah. A friend of mine went to, um, I think it was Russia, and he was following, they were, they were, during his um, 40th birthday, many years ago, they were um, saying the story. One of his friends, who came in, evidently the guy is not a believer, but he was trying to talk about this mutual friend of ours on his 40th birthday to say the type of person he is. He says, so they were, went for some business in Russia, and he said, let me take you somewhere. So he took him to a nightclub. Where are you taking him to? Those type of dirty nightclubs, where they show some type of thing. He said that this mutual friend of ours, as he got in there and saw these women in poles and so on with her, just not he just showed them blood of Jesus that the whole nightclub became scared. That I shouted, blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus. And he, he, he shouted, he was hitting his head on the wall because he couldn't open his eyes again. Blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus. <laughs> now that's a Christian. The grace of God teaches us to do that. Not today's grace. They go to the swimming pool. They will now look for a vantage position. <laughs> and cross their leg and do as if they are reading a book. <laughs> they will hold the book up. They could even open it to the Bible. <laughs> then they will wear sunglasses. Oh, you know the secret, eh? <laughs> So all you brothers who think you are fooling people, they know, the women know it. They put on the sunglasses, they pose. Oh, hallelujah. It's not it, hallelujah. The grace of God <laughs> that brings salvation has appeared to all men. It teaches us, say no. you say no to that. No. If that is not operating inside of you, you have to check the type of grace you are working with. It's a dangerous grace. It's a grace that might deny you and deprive you of this glorious reward that is awaiting us. This glorious incorruptible crown that is awaiting us. It teaches us not to be a partaker of, of these people. It tells us that the type of things that these people are lusting for, this world is lusting for, especially in the times we are living in, where it's become the order of the day. It's almost the order of the day. And many of our churches are not helping matters because they themselves are positioned that way. They are positioned to... I tell some people, you need to leave certain type of churches. Because I see them. I see the covetousness inside of them. Why? Because they are in this church and they have not trained themselves yet. I mean, it's okay to be there if you are trained by God. But they are in this church and all they want, they see everybody there. Everybody is there. It's a big man. And some of them rightfully so. They have the big cars and the big everything and everything, big, big, big. But you are small. And your faith and your, your character in God is not ripe enough to be able to manage, manage it. So you end up just lusting, wanting more. You see, I know people like that. They're living where they should not live. Because they have friends in the same church or in the same circle and these friends are have you know, maybe big cars or, or big whatever, and they want to belong. They want to flow with the crowd. And God blesses them with a little something, and they make a little breakthrough. Maybe give them five million naira that was to change their life forever. Invest in something and build it and multiply. They went and bought a new car. Boom. And they make so. It's a, what is a new car now? Range Rover, Infinity. They cannot pay for petrol after that. After that, they are now disturbing everybody. What do you think that is? This is worldly loss. It's a, it's a type of loss. The loss of the eyes. The loss of the flesh. 
You cannot control yourself again. So that means that the salvation of Christ, one of the things he has to do to you is to bring you to a place where you must defeat loss. You must overcome this thing. Blessed is he that overcomes. He will sit with me on my throne. You cannot say that you are a Christian if you are not overcoming these things. You are being set up for an eternal shame. You are being set up for one chance. A one chance bus, white bus that is black roof. It may be as beautiful as it may be. It's not the green bus with this golden roof. It's not teaching you to say no to ungodliness. You are going to miss anybody who is having this lively hope that I'm going to make it and is not defeating lonely loss and, and say no to ungodliness. He's deceiving himself. It's, it's, see, you know, let me show you a scripture. The same words. Ephesians chapter 5. Let me start. I know it's about 6, 5, 6. But let me start from 2. It tells us to walk in love. Walk in love as Christ loved us. And gave himself up for us. This important instruction. But we're not talking about Let's go on. Just quickly. 3. But what? Fornication. Is that not loss of the flesh? Uncleanness. All of it. What is all uncleanness? What type of thing is uncleanness? Pornography. Immorality, dirty thoughts, dirty things. You know, there are so many dirty things happening. I was watching a movie, a documentary about a pastor in the U.S. And he, had, he was a drama who wanted to be a pastor at all by fire by force. Eventually he became a pastor. Married a woman much older than he. But by the time he became the pastor, he was sleeping with all the girls in the church. Sleep, and he has been planning it forever. And not just that, the guy was just quaffing all the money in the church. Eating, just living large. Anybody talking, shut them down. Shut them down. I don't know why people are still in such an environment. Is it a juju that they are using to hold people down? It probably is. Because I, I can't like that. They are complaining. The pastor is not like this. pastor is not like this. And so on and so forth. Have you seen some of these movies they show now? Preachers of somewhere. Preachers of. Have you seen those films? I watched some of them. I was so scared. I said, what's going on? And they, they, are, they are taunting they, from one wife to the other wife. From one, some are not even wives. They're just, some of them are some of the most popular people around. And I'm like, what are they reproducing? Because I see some of these names. They are the names that we're here growing up as Christians. No wonder the church is where it is today. Look at one that died recently. Has been a homosexual for a long time. Pastor in church of more than 30,000 people. He has been sending messages. When I was a small Christian, I've been reading his books. And what, what do they have to offer? They are shaping a whole generation. You have to watch out for the salvation that you have had. If this salvation, you must check yourself. If you want to really make it to heaven, if you want this undeniable crown, this crown, look for me. Because you know, everybody says, I'll be there. You don't know how many people I've talked to as a pastor. Don't worry, Pastor, I'll make it. It's not yam. It's not empty talk. It's not wishful thinking. You can sit down there. Eternity is knocking and eternity might be tomorrow for somebody. You may be listening to me. It might be tomorrow. You may not expect it. That's the danger of eternity. If you want this beautiful, the Bible talks about the recompense of reward. I don't know if I'll be able to go in there, that today. But, but I, I'm still building into there. If you really want to go into this heavenly glory that God is really asking of us. Because I find out that God wants us to be soul winners. But why are you, can you be a soul winner without winning your own soul first? Bible talks about the Pharisees. Bible says that they, they go around winning souls and making converts. They make them twice children of hell. Then he says, they don't enter heaven and they are not allowing any other person to enter. So there are people who are thinking they are making heaven. Not only thinking, they are even preaching to other people and they are making converts and they are making them twice children of hell. Jesus said, I would say, get out, I never knew you. We have to check ourselves. We have to correct ourselves. We have to understand that, is this one chance? What I have been walking in, what I have been believing, is this the grace? The Bible says, in our midst, you should not hear of fornication. You should not hear of uncleanness. You should not hear of filthiness. It's what he says, he said, let it what? Let it not even be named. Wow. It's as if we are in a different day. Not twice. Let it not once. 
That's how harsh the grace of God. We are supposed to find the grace and walk in this grace to the point that let it not once be named amongst you as become a saint. Look at the next verse. Neither cleanness, filthiness, nor what? No. You see them? Uh, you join them, laugh. Jesus coming. Uh, Jesus has not come home. You join them. I see some of you on Facebook. This is the jesting. You share dirty jokes as a child of God. As if it's funny. So where is your mind? That jesting is not so much so that the jesting itself is a big deal to God. Is that your heart? Now what, what makes your heart to like such a thing? What makes your heart to like such a thing? I belong to different groups. Some groups are secular from business, from colleagues, and so on and so forth, from different organizations I've been a part of. And whenever I come across anything that sounds like a dirty jesting, I leave. So I can't force anybody to stop what they're doing. I've experienced it. They send jokes about women and this one and that one. I, just, I, just, I try sometimes, and some of them may shut you down and say no. And they think it's fun. Uh, come on, it's just fun. Like the one I had a, a while back. They were talking about, oh, what is this? this is, uh, I look like two oranges. This is, this is. They're talking of a woman's chest. So I wrote to them. I said, this thing, we have many of us in this group. Do you like to continue this group? Can you please keep that to your private? This is offending us. Why am I so boring? I'm so antisocial. I'm so this. I beg, this is not a church. This is not, they started all this one. Okay, I didn't say anything. I just quickly exited for myself. It's as simple as that. You, know, you, you become the one perpetrating such nonsense. Something's wrong with your heart. Please check your heart. If you want to really make heaven, if you want to really come to this eternal glory so that we will look for you, and you not just be a foolish, uh, what do you call, wishful thinker, I will be there, I will be there. You won't be there. He says, listen, these things are not convenient. Rather, what we should spend our time is giving thanks, celebrating God. Look at verse 5. For this no, understand this, no whoremonger, like prostitute, person who is sleeping around. They, when they say whoremonger, even a woman who slept out with one man who is not her husband is whoremonger those days. So they know what they are talking about. It's not now that... <laughs> Do you know if you go back to the 1920s, 30s, those days, women, they had what they call, is it breeches? Who knows what breeches are? Eh? It's an underwear. It's not this type of small pants they wear today. They are pants of those days. Our grandmothers were long. That's the pants. They still have something else on that big one too. Then they have another big, that one. They parted themselves well. Like many of our decent wives do, do today. Pad, pad, pad all over the place. It's very good. But now it's changed. It's now been changed. Now, somebody just designed an idea. Okay, let's change it. From big pan, from breeches, let it be small pan. Then it be smaller pan. But those things are bedroom things. But when it becomes a public something, in those days, it's like, oh, that. Imagine, in, I'm talking of just in the 20s or 30s, when men, where women wore breeches, they wore gowns. They, in, in, in the foreign countries, they had special things that made the gown even big and full and loaded. Imagine they saw a lady who, what we call descends today, she had a skirt up to here. What would they call her? In those days, <laughs> very bad names. Why? Because, you know, the culture is now being watered down. We are supposed to protect ourselves. Today, now, the average girl, even in church, has her cleavage showing. We've been assaulted by that many times. I had one come to my office for prayer, and she came like this, and I, as I shook her, I shook her, I shook her back. You have to work with me to understand me. <laughs> you understand? Because I don't fear those type of things. She said, can I tell you the truth? She's a wonderful saint now. She's another church was here for a long time. She confessed. I cast out demons from her that day. She was broken to the point that I say this before God. Herself and a friend, they had just gone to Ajegunle and gone to see a priest, a demonic priest, 
to get juju so that the juju will hook me. I didn't know any. It was in the process. When I told her, straight up, in my usual candid way, jovial but firm. No, 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 no. And, and I said, do you know that the devil is using you? Why, why do you what, what are you trying to achieve? Even if you don't come to my office, what are you doing like this outside? This is not for, how. Somebody there just started coming to the church herself and a friend. One thing led to the other, and she broke down in tears. I started crying. I sent for her friend because I was seeing her one after the other. When the friend saw what was happening, it was the friend who opened her mouth and said, That's what she, that's what she said. She said, They just came from her. They brought soaps and things that they brought creams. We burnt them. I burnt them in the office that day. And she confessed to me. She said to me, They gave them to rub that any man that they talk to by rubbing those things, they will do anything any mo- for money. Anything they want. So they said, let them come and try it on Pastor Mazino first. <laughs> the thing is, I, I couldn't believe my ears. So of all the men in the whole of Lagos and Nigeria, it's Pastor Mazino, the, the one you are supposed to be afraid. I felt insulted that maybe they are not afraid of me. So if you see me boning very hard, so <laughs> praise God. Well, but I'm just joking. But at the end of the day, we cast out the spirits from them. Now picture this. I kept up staring at her. How are you doing, baby? Yeah. And it turns to one joke. What is going to happen? She will tell you. Oh, one chance. <laughs> Children of God, let it not be named amongst us. Because not once. Because any, you have to deal with yourself. You have to bring yourself under accountability. If you are in such a situation and you are in this church, you see your PCG leader. We're not here to judge anybody or to condemn anybody. We might judge you by telling you the word of God, but it's never to harm you. It's never to destroy you, to help you. Do you understand? It's just for correction because all of us were saved by grace. None of us is standing by grace. So it is understandable that sometimes we're going through something. It can be any reason. I've known men who, at the age more in life, they found out that they have lost their drive, even in the bedroom. So they started taking um, all kinds of medications. And as they do the medication, it also sparks their blood too. So anything they see, it sparks it up too. Do you understand what I'm saying? And by the time we deal with them in counseling, you, you regulate them. You find out that, look, regulate yourself while we wait on the Lord. Do you understand what I'm saying? So please, let us be very circumspect. I want us to all meet ourselves in heaven. It's not going to be wishful thinking. It says that no unclean person who is covetous, you see this? Covetous. How many of us are really covetous? Because it's something that, you know, we are taking these things for granted and we think that when we come to church and what we only do is focus on people's needs. We are helping them. We are not helping them. If our Christianity is just to be focusing on your needs, we're not helping you. That's what Jesus called the Gentile generation. Say, so this is what the Gentiles do. It's about what we're we going to eat, what we're we going to drink. We have to help you to do the right thing, to focus on God and please God. Why? Because eternity is knocking. Eternity is beckoning at the door. I truly believe that if many of our churches begin to teach the truth, many people will leave the church. We may not have all these mega, mega churches. When Rome became a mega church, as it became mega church, it entered into all kinds of sin. When they were small, 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 small churches like that, they were putting themselves in check. I'm not saying that big churches do not have, there must be many of them doing very well. But the problem, the point is this. To, to, to maintain our message, the message becomes more important than the ministry, the size, the quantity, and so on. The message is more important. And if once you find out that you have a message that continues to help people to put themselves in check, that continues to major on the major and minor on the minor, you find out that the average heart is appetite are different. The appetite of the average person, when somebody comes particularly to this church, I am so used to it. I have most of you who have been here, who I have talked with, you come and tell me the reason you are here. Or not to you, there's nothing you have to tell me. The reason you are here is because you are looking for God. There's nobody in his right mind comes to this church. Yeah. 
you think I don't know? I know. I already we said deliberate something. So I have people come to the pastor. You know, I watch you on the TV. I, uh, you know, I, I, I know you don't know that everybody here is there because the average person doesn't want. It's like this. They, I mean, who I don't want to talk to them. But tell me, I invited different people. who are talking as pastors. Like, how? Why? Why are people not stay? So I was asking the question. I was telling, saying his own story. Now he has personally invited many people. Just that when they come, they can't stay. Many of them say, oh boy, I know they follow you, go to this church again. <laughs> Am I correct? <laughs> and guess why? You know what? The Bible says men love darkness in, in John chapter 3, 17 and 18. Rather than light. So rather than, so that their deeds will be exposed, they don't want this. It's, I'm not ready for this. I'm not, I had a 419 guy who was trying to lure me into sin. They wanted to give us a lot of money. He said if they give us uh, the help, they started mentioning churches, they help this church, they help that church. Now they are, they are growing wings. And they will start off by giving us, I can't remember then, 50 million or 30 million or something. And we'll be able to organize any program we want, do whatever we do. And that's just the first installment. The only thing is that be careful how you do. Teach us about faith. See, those are the things that began to st- stimulate me. I was going on in the church. And I told them, well, you have admitted to me you are 419. You have to sell all you have, give it to the poor, don't even bring it to the church. So that you don't think I want it. And come and follow the Lord. They now mentioned the name of a big church that we all know. They said, no, I, I was in this church. This is my pastor. This is, this is, do you know what is going on? He, he blessed us. He told us that he, all things have passed away. Yeah. I'm telling you, sell all and follow him. If not, you are going to hell. They were so angry with me. They want me to tell them something. That, how can you, you are still doing your 419, and a pastor is blessing you and telling you that is the richest of the Gentiles. Because he's bringing money. This is criminal. This is evil. There's so much evil in the church. This covetousness. A friend of mine in the UK is going to a Baptist church or one of these Methodists or something, one of these old church that we laugh at and we say that these are old church. He said to me, he said, Pastor, he was a pastor. He has been a pastor for many years. I know him very well. Anointed man. He said, Pastor, I just came born again again. He says the love, small church, not more than 100 people. The love is so palpable there. You don't know these people. They are just ordinary white people there. They, 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 amongst one another, they are part people. He says that one day, somebody brought money. They did an offering. And they raised money. And the money they needed, I don't know what, what it was, maybe 1,000 pounds or 2,000 pounds. And they were able to raise about maybe two, five or 3,000 in the course of it. So the next day, in short, they announced uh, this person, uh, the last people they, that gave when it became 2,000. After 2,000, please come back and take your money. I, I, <laughs> you're laughing when I heard it I didn't laugh I, I had to ask myself me that I say that I'm not covetous I, I honestly said to myself God have mercy on my soul because I know that there are times that we've raised money maybe it's more than we thought okay let's divert it for other things I mean we use it for other useful things it's all bad they're, that means there are people operating in high level. You don't hear about them. They are higher than us. They are not shouting person. Go like, kaba, kaba, kaba. Boo, 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 and you're sinning. Funny enough, those with the most when I see someone with an incredible tongue, I watch them very well. I have many of them. I have a friend, guy who I know. Incredible. If you hear his tongue, it's like a velvet tongue. But it's, it's, it's another level type of talk. It makes us, if you've ever really prayed with me, it makes us look like crazy, ugly tongues. Because I, I know my tongues are not the sweetest. My wife laughs at me all the time. Sometimes when we start praying and I start, Okolo! Okolo! I can't help myself. I, I always used to wish my tongues were so sweet. But they are not sweet. Up to the point my wife prays with me and she looks at me, what is this guy doing? <laughs> this guy's tongue, you need to, we use, I used to watch his tongue like this. Wow, God, give tongues to men. <laughs> but he was still in offering in church. He, and he, he comes to church, he will lie down on the floor and worship. When you see him, oh, like you, Lord. Oh, like you, Lord. And by the time we started catching him all the time, we, he still continues, oh, like you, Lord. And I, I realized that it is not about velvety stones. 
Some that even have ugly tongues might be better. Some that even have no tongues. They are not even speaking in tongues. They might be best. Some of us are deceiving ourselves. We think now, now, Holy Ghost. And now, maybe you are even casting out devils. Have you not heard that many will say, Lord, Lord, and I cast out devils? And he said, get out, I never knew you. I did wonderful works. I built schools. I built hospitals. Get out, I never knew you. Why? You must say no to ungodliness. If you have any inheritance, he says, whoever is an adulterer, idolater, you do not have inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Now look at verse 6. Let, can we read it together? One, two, three, go. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things comes the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. So he's not talking to the children of disobedience now. He's talking to the children of God. And he's telling them that these are the things that makes God to condemn the children of disobedience. Then he goes to the next verse and says, don't be partakers. Go on, next verse. Be not partakers with them. Do not let anybody deceive you. The grace of God that brings salvation, if you go back there, it has appeared to all men. If you are going to make heaven, and if we are going to really lead people, you have to have a message. Was it not you again, Pastor Andy, who told me, let me tell this 50th birthday, so I have to keep talking about him a lot, use him as my example. He, he, he said to me one time, was it you went to London or somewhere and you were preaching and they were, the people there were telling you, I've never heard the message like this. That's why we, we're God, God is leading us to be an army, to be a soul winner. But I cannot start even talking about soul winning until you get the message right. Because you have to get the message, be the message, then you preach the message. He didn't want them to rush out. You got to get it right yourself. You have to be a light. If not, you will be a, 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 a source of hindrance to God's people. And to the people who are potentially going to make it to, to the kingdom of God. Cross over by your message. You don't want to be a hindrance like the Pharisees were. So you have to be that message. You have to know the message first. And that message that the grace of God is bringing salvation. It, so I mean, it teaches us to say no. And guess what? It says that we should live soberly. What is sober? Who knows what sobriety is? Yeah? Huh? Sorry? Circumspectly. That's another big grammar to go over. It, 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 there's, there's a certain level of seriousness and carefulness. Do you understand what I'm saying? You know, you, you don't take anything for granted. This, this word, you should live soberly. In fact, why should we live soberly? You know why? Why should you approach things with this level of seriousness? Peter wants the same thing. Peter says so. Peter says so. Where does he say so? First Peter chapter 4, verse 7. Verse 7. No, second Peter doesn't have chapter 4. That's in the first Peter. Please let me see. Soberly, go there quickly and come back. Yeah. But the end, this is why you should be sober. But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober. And watch with prayer to the end. You can go back. Why? The soberness is coming because that grace is also helping us to know. The end is at hand, though. We're all standing at the edge of eternity. Because when you start thinking, when you think salvation is just a game, you will not be sober. You think that this is a play. This is not a play. This is not game. This, this anybody crossover. Listen, a soul, you just hear, this friend has died. 